Hello, and welcome back. Before we get started, I wanted to say thank you to everyone who watched, liked, and subscribed during my last video. I very much appreciate your kindness, and I hope I can keep creating content that you guys want to see. Getting to that, today's project is this PS1. I picked this up for free. I was picking up a Nintendo 64 off of Facebook Marketplace, and the guy who was selling me that had this, and he said it didn't work, and he didn't want it, and he wanted to know if I wanted it before he threw it in the garbage. And I absolutely said yes, because who doesn't want a free PlayStation 1? Now, it was pretty gross looking, so I brought it home and immediately cleaned it. After we did that, put it back together, plugged it in, popped in a disc, and it didn't read. So I popped open the disc tray and held down the door closed mechanism and I saw that the disc was spinning really slowly and it was kind of making a grinding noise as it turned. So I assumed the disc drive motor was bad. Now I couldn't find just the motor so I bought a whole laser assembly. The new laser didn't work. I don't know if it was me installing it wrong, if it was the wrong laser, but I could not get it to work with the new laser. What I ended up doing was taking the original laser and transferring that onto the new assembly with the new motor and the new slider motor. And it started reading discs. But I still got disc read errors because the laser was original. It's very old, probably close to getting burnt out. And a lot of my discs are scratched up because they're second hand. That's just the way it is. So today, we're gonna solve that issue with the X station. So what is the X station? The X station is an optical drive emulator. And what that does is it pretends to be the disk drive assembly, but we load the games onto an SD card. And that's going to let us completely bypass our disk read errors. Now with this, we're also going to be using a Memcard Pro from 8-Bit Mods. This is going to let us make virtual memory cards on an SD card as well. And then we've also got this 3D printed bracket from Laser Bear Industries that goes along with the X station so we don't have to fiddle with the SD card down into the console. So now that we've got everything, let's start unboxing it. Here we have our X station box. This is everything that comes with it. So we've got a ribbon cable that goes from the quick solder board up to the main board. We've got our main board with the processor that's going to help us emulate the disk drive. A set of standoffs to hold the board in place. And then we get two quick solder boards. This one is for 1000 series motherboards. And this one is for 5000 series motherboards. Now we've got a 1000, so we're going to be using this one. Now for the Memcard Pro, there's not a whole lot to unbox. We've got our sheet that tells us where to find our manual and the Memcard Pro. That's it. This is basically just plugged in like a memory card. You got to have an SD card in it. So we'll get to that later. All right, now that we've seen everything, Let's get started. We've got our 1000 series PS1 and we need to get the motherboard out.
Now that we've got our motherboard out, we need to do some prep work before we can finish installing the X station. I'm going to leave a link to the GitHub page for the X station in the description, and you can just see the web page down here at the bottom. They've got detailed schematics on what components need to be removed and what pins need to be lifted on what chips. But for now, let's get that done. Alright, so we're on to soldering the QSB onto the bottom of the motherboard. So here we've got the 1000 series QSB, and it's going to sit right here. So as you can see, you've got this little resistor, and they've got a cutout for it. That's a helpful indicator as to where you're putting it. So all these gold pads have to get soldered to the spots that they're next to. So let's take care of that now. And that's it, we're all done soldering. Now, we just have to install the motherboard and the rest of the X station. Moving on to the X station itself, we also have these three standoffs, and they just pop into the board down here next to the Wi Fi antenna, and then need these two top corners. These serve to kind of stabilize the X station as it sits on the pins where the disc tray used to be. 
But the problem is the standoffs are too tall and it doesn't let the board sit down on the pins. Now they actually call this out in the GitHub and I just trimmed them down with a razor blade and a set of pliers. I did have to trim them a couple times to get the 3D printed bracket to fit. I didn't quite cut it short enough the first time. Just kind of take your time, trim them down little at a time until you get it to the right height. Hey, sorry, I hate to kill the vibe right here, but this is a little important note. Depending on where you get the ribbon cable extender for the SD card, you might get a board that doesn't have a bevel cut in it, as shown here. And that can damage the SD card slot on the X station, so you need to file the bevel onto the SD card adapter, otherwise you could damage the X station. Back to the video. Okay, I'm going to hold off on putting in the last five screws for now because we still have to set up these. These are going to be our SD cards for the X station and one for the MemCard Pro. For that, we got to go to the computer. I thought we should start with the MemCard Pro. So I just came here to the 8-bit mods page, went to the MemCard Pro for PlayStation 1, scroll down, and you hit the user manual, and that's going to bring up this. Now here, we're going to download two things. If you see here on the initial setup page, we want to download the SD card formatter. And we also want to download the firmware for the MemCard Pro. You go through a couple pages on the SD Association page. You pick your operating system and you scroll down. When you hit accept here, it's going to download it in a compressed folder. The other link takes you here and you hit download, downloads a compressed folder. And like I usually do, we've got all our files in this folder right here. Now we actually have the X station ones here too already, but here's our SD card formatter folder. Here's our SD card formatter. So let's open that up and I'll bring that up here for you guys to see. Now I've got a memory card loaded into slot F. Make sure you've got the right one because you are going to completely format this SD card. So you want to make sure it's not something that you've got important information on. This is writing it in a specific format for the MemCard Pro. Hit format and it's done. So now these three files we want to put on the root of that memory card. So we're going to copy, open this up, drive F, paste, and now we've got those three files on there. Now we can eject it eject. Now for the X station, very similar. We go to the GitHub, releases, and right here on the right you see releases. We're going to get the latest one. And it's right here, update 202.zip. You download it, 
downloads as a compressed folder, decompress it, and here it is, update 202. These are the files we need, but on the SD card, which we should format it, so this is the one that's going in our X station, we're going to quick format that. Then we will pull up our removable disk, our SD card, and in here we want to make a new folder. Folder. And we want to name it 00x station. Now you have to name it exactly like that, otherwise the X station is not going to know what to do with it. So in that folder we just made, we're going to come to our work folder, open up update 202 that we extracted, take the loader and update, and stick it inside that X station folder. Now, you grab your backups, here's one of mine, stick it on the root, and it's going to copy it. And now we can go test it. Now, since this is the first time we plug in the MemCard Pro, it actually has to install the firmware. So when you power on your PlayStation, it's going to boot up, and then a progress bar will show up saying updating firmware. You don't have to do this every time. It's just the initial setup, and I believe it will also do it if you update the MemCard Pro software. And once it's done, we're just going to reset the console. And there you have it, our PlayStation is ready to play all our favorite games directly from an SD card and we never have to worry about running out of space on our memory card and deleting a 100 hour Final Fantasy 7 run by accident. But there is one thing holding us back. It's these. The original composite cables. Now composite's fine for a PlayStation and admittedly the TV that I was using only has composite input and it's not that great but I've got an RGB modded TV and we've also got that S video modded TV that I did earlier this year on the channel but to use those we need an RGB cable and an S video cable for a PlayStation so I figured we could make some
For our S video cable, we're going to need audio lines, an S video cable, and a PlayStation 1, 2, and 3 multi aux connector. We're also going to use this for the RGB cable, and for that, we're also going to need some capacitors, a resistor, and for the donor cable, I'm going to be using this VGA cable I had lying around. This is our PlayStation multi out connector. The pins on it are labeled 1 through 12. When you plug it into the PlayStation, it's flipped around and facing this way. So here, pin 1 is all the way to the left, and pin 12 is all the way to the right, and they're numbered 1, 2, 3, 4, staggered like that all the way till 12. The pins that we care about for an S-Video cable, pin 1 is going to be our right audio ground, pin 2 is going to be our right audio signal, pin 3 is our left audio ground, pin 4 is our left audio signal, pin 5 is going to be the Y or Luma circuit, pin 7 is going to be the C or Chroma circuit, and pin 8 is going to be the ground wire for both the Luma and Chroma wires. On the other end of that cable, we're going to have this S-Video connector. So the pins on here are 1, 2, 3, 4. Pins 1 and 2 are going to be our ground wires. 3 is for our Luma, or Y, and 4 is for our Chroma, or C. Now if you're making it from scratch, you don't have to worry about which wire is which because you're going to be deciding that. But here, when you're using a wire that's already pre-made and just using it, you've got to figure out which one is which. And that's where we're going to use a multimeter. I'm just going to test the resistance from pin 3 to the wires in the back and see which color is my Luma circuit. So I turn on my meter. You always want to test your leads and make sure you've got a good connection. So if you have an issue, you know it's not your leads. It's kind of tricky to get the positioning right on this, especially when you're doing it with a tiny little snub. But if you position it just right, you come around to the back. So we're not getting any continuity on the black wire. And our red wire looks like that's the right one. So now we know for this wire, our red is our Luma circuit and our black is going to be our Chroma. And the last connector we're working with is the two audio RCA cables. Now these are pretty simple. It's just a signal and a ground. The signal is that tiny copper in the middle and the ground is kind of surrounding the white insulation that is in the middle. And that's it. So let's go make this cable. Now, to put the connector end together, you just slide the metal cover over the connector, then you have the two halves of the connector shell. The half that has the arrow molded into the outside is the top. You want to line up the inner part of the connector so that it rests against these two tabs, and then just snap the other half on.
Now for the PlayStation connector for the RGB. The pins that we're worried about are the same audio pins, one through four. We're still going to use pin five, the S Video Y, for our video sync. It's normally the composite, but the S Video Y is gonna have less noise on it. We're going to use pin eight as our video ground for all three colors, the blue, the red, the green. Pin 10 is going to be five volts. Pin nine, is blue, pin 11 is red, and pin 12 is green. This is the SCART connector we're going to be using for the other end of the cable. Now the pins are set up similar to the PlayStation where they're staggered, but here one is going to start at the top and we're going to end on pin 20. Technically there is a pin 21 and that's the metal shell that goes around the whole connector and it's just going to be a ground overall, kind of like a shield. The connections we need to make here are audio left on pin 2. Audio right is going to be on pin 6. Then from pins 8 to pin 16, we're going to solder a 180 ohm resistor connecting those two pins. And then on the side of the resistor connected to pin 8, we're going to take the 5 volts from the PlayStation. Pin 20 is the sync and it's normally the composite video signal but we're going to be using the Luma, like I said earlier. On the top row, we've got pin seven for the blue, pin 11 for green, and pin 15 for red. Now, each of those are going to have the negative leg of a 220 nanoferrite capacitor soldered to them. And then the positive leg is going to be soldered to the wire going to the PlayStation connector. On a normal cable, for SCART, all the grounds are shared. Most diagrams just show them all merged in the SCART connector and just have one overall shield that goes around the whole cable going to the console. We're gonna do it a little bit differently. I'm going to use the individual shields on my video lines and then the rest of the grounds will be shared. Now the video grounds are going to be five for blue, nine for green, and 13 for red. We'll merge all three of those at the other end at the PlayStation connector to the video ground. That leaves pins 4, 17, and 18. All of those grounds will put to pins 1 and 3 on the PlayStation connector. Now that we know where everything goes, let's make that cable. Now that we finished our RGB cable, we have access to each native analog output that this PS1 is capable of putting out. We've got our composite, our S-Video, and our RGB. Adding the X-Station to the PS1 is something that I've been looking forward to doing for a while now, and I just never 
really felt the push to do it, especially when the Mr. got PlayStation 1 support. But there's something about playing on original hardware that that calls to me. So I decided I should share it with you. I hope I inspired some of you to dig out that PS1 that's sitting in the back of your closet collecting dust bunnies and give it a spin. Maybe it works and loads up discs, no problem. Maybe it doesn't and it's completely dead and you'll have to refurbish it. Now before we go into the comparison shots on the outro, I want to say thank you for watching and I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank <laughs> you. 